<laughs> okay. We missed you, I tell you. Thank you for that good hug. <laughs> We've never seen a time like this. Uh, it's just amazing, but uh, all things will work together for good, no doubt. If you had a cushion or things for the children, they're on the tables in the vestibule back here. Uh, they're spread out, and uh, you're welcome to pick those up any time. But um, appreciate all the work. Our elders have really had been doing thinking and planning, and uh, I think they've come up with a good plan for today. And our faith is overcoming our fears with the good Lord's help. They ask that our service sermon be short, and I know that disappoints a lot of you. <laughs> Grady Judd's the only one that complains about short sermons, and he's not here. He'll probably get the later service, but uh, so we'll go along with their request. We put, took one song out uh, that we usually have, but uh, well, the, today is Mother's Day. Yeah, you knew that, and I'm not telling you something you didn't know, and you also know that uh, the good book teaches the fifth commandment, Exodus 20 and verse 12, is that we honor our mothers and fathers. Didn't say how to do that. I'd say mainly by the lives we live and by loving them every day, not just one day out of the year. But um, also in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, the good reading that Mark did there, uh, children obey your parents and the Lord, but this is right, honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So God certainly wants us to honor our mothers. Those of you who have been here a while, we've been here nearly 15 years with this good church, we'll be in August, know that I talk about my dad quite often. My dad was my hero, he still is my hero, even though he's been gone since 1970. And um, he was an elder in the church at Mac Bruce Chapel Congregation for a number of years. He preached, he talked, he was very concerned about the loss and did a lot of visiting. I'd go with him often. Um, he was one, uh, had five bronze stars that he earned, earned in uh, the World War II effort. He never talked about it, never explained. I had to find out after he died through research. He just said that he worked on Jeeps and trucks as a mechanic. But I found out that five different missions he went behind the enemy lines to repair jeeps and trucks that were stalled and get them going so they could be used again. He never talked about that. I found that out. He didn't brag. But he was my hero. He could do just about anything. But I haven't talked as much about my mother, so I got to thinking this week, you know, there are some spiritual lessons that I learned from my mother that I wanted to share with you in a brief lesson, as well as I know all of you Surely all of you uh, had God-fearing mothers that you too could um, write and explain or talk about some of the lessons that you learned uh, from your dear mother. We all did. Now, not that our mothers were perfect. They were not. But they're about as close to perfection, I guess, as you could get would be our dear mother. So I wanted to think about some spiritual lessons that I learned from my mother that maybe you can identify with. First of all was her determination. My mother decided when she was a teenager down in Jackson County, she was reared in the Columbus Hill, Hurricane community, uh, right where the Mabry nursing home is now is where she grew up in that hollow, it's Gall Hollow. And she was a Gall. And uh, Steve Gall was my grandpa. Um, Benton Gall, Steve was his brother. So, um, they went to school, climbed up Columbus Hill, and the same building they went to school in on top of Columbus Hill was where they also worshiped with the church. Mama decided for whatever reason as a teenager in dead of winter that she wanted to be baptized. Well, of course, the explanation was it's winter time. They didn't have anything like an indoor baptistry. And so uh, she said, I, I want to be baptized. I need to be baptized. So I went down the Roaring River down to the foot of the hill and there was ice around the edges of the river and they would they broke the little ice away and got down in that river and baptized her. I don't know who the preacher was, I'll never know, because those who would know have died and gone. And you know you ought to really sit down and talk to your parents and your family and write down, keep logs about things like that. Who baptized my mama? I don't know. Never know. Too late. 
all those things about dad, my dad in World War II, he never talked about them. I wished I'd asked him questions and wrote it down, write it down. But she was determined to be baptized, even to break the ice. We've talked about that through the years. Around the edge of the river there was a little ice, and they broke that stepping out to go down into the shallow waters of the Roaring River. Well, determination also was a part of her attitude because um, there was an old family store in the community where she would take the small chickens to try to get items to exchange and some of the men sitting on the porch would laugh at her that she got those chickens underneath their mother's wings. Evidently, they were too young really to be sold. And the store owner would often, in the presence of all these men sitting around, would make remarks about that her daddy needed to come and settle the money that was owed to them at the store. And that uh, he was tired of carrying them on credit and they were, their credit was gone until her, her daddy would get over there and do something about it and her daddy was an alcoholic, he was a drunk, and they nearly starved to death. Mama determined, and she decided, as quick as she got out of high school, uh, grade school, eighth grade, that she would work and she would pay off the family debt. And she did, she worked and paid off the family debt, and she had that um, uh, Scarlett O'Hara attitude when Scarlett's out in the field so hungry she ate a turnip, and she said, I promise to God I'll never be hungry again, that was the attitude Mama had. She was so determined she would never owe the country store again and have to be ridiculed as a child. You better tell your daddy to get up here and pay some of this money he owes. You got those chickens from underneath your mother's wings, didn't you? Never again she paid the debt. So Mama's determination was a great lesson. Like the Shumanite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, when she prepared a room for the man of God for him to stay, he asked what he could do for her. Gehazi, his servant, said, uh, maybe let's speak her name to the king. She said, I don't care about that. Uh, I, I live among my own people. And Gehazi said, I know they don't have any children. She'd love to be a mother. So Elisha said this time of life, nine months, that she would become a mother, and she did. The boy was raised, and then he had that terrible headache one day out in the fields, and he died. And when they came and told her that he had died, she immediately had a horse saddled and they rushed, she and a servant, to find the man of God. And the man of God saw her coming. He sent Gehazi out to meet her. Ask her, is it well? Is it well with her? And the rider approached her and said, is it well? She said, it is well. She lost her only son, but she was putting her faith and trust in God. The Shumanite woman, 2 Kings 4, had that kind of determination that my mother certainly exemplified. Second of all, a lesson I learned from my mother was her faithfulness. We attended the McBurns Chapel congregation. They did not have a Bible study program on Wednesday evenings. But at Winston's Chapel, where my Uncle Paul and Uncle uh, Vernon, Aunt Becca, and Aunt Eula and all their families went to Winston's Chapel, they had a Bible study. And Jack Gall came and taught the Bible study on Wednesday nights. He had graduated from David Liscombe College. He was very knowledgeable and a very good Bible teacher. One day we were, we would go there on Wednesday nights, go to Matthew Chapel on Sunday. We were coming home and Daddy made the comment. He said, you know, this is really not right. We're giving all of our contribution to Matthew Chapel and here we're going to Winston Chapel on Wednesday night. This, that's not right. And Mama said, well, why don't we start a Bible class at Macbrook's Chapel on Wednesday night? You, one of the others, started. And she said, I, I, won't, I am going to be in a Bible class on Wednesday night. <laughs> I'm sitting in the back seat listening to all this. My mother didn't talk that way very often, but it was, I will be in a Bible class on Wednesday night. Well, Daddy immediately started one at Macbrook's Chapel. But the point is her faithfulness. She loved the Word of God. She loved to study the Word of God. Thy Word, Psalms 119, verse 105, Thy Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway. It was certainly a, learn, a lesson I learned from my mother. Third of all, my mother was kind and gentle. I never heard her say an ugly word. I never know her to throw an object at anybody else. She was gentle and kind. My grandma Fox died of cancer. And it was an open cancerous wound on her side. And my Aunt Rebecca would talk about how often her mama would say, Virginia, or Jenny as they all call mama, 
She's the softest and the kindest and the most gentle one in dressing my wound, my sore, cancer sore. And she said, she would say that often, Mama was gentle and kind. Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32 says that we should be kind-hearted, that we should practice that kind of attitude, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Kindness should be a part of the Christian's makeup. And my mother, I learned a lot of kindness from her. Fourth of all, my mother was a concordance. Back before folks had concordances where you could look up Bible verses, where are they in the Bible? Good concordance will show you. My mother was a concordance for our family. Now, Daddy was an uh, elder, and he's the one people would often call and say, Now, John Henry, where in the Bible does it talk about upon the first day of the week the disciples met together to break bread? Or where does it talk about the first day of the week upon the first day of the week, you know, Levi and Store? Or, or other questions about baptism? And usually Daddy knew the answer, but if it were a difficult one, he would say to Mama, Where is this in the Bible? She knew. I never knew a time that Mama didn't know where the verses were. Daddy sometimes could be stumped. Never knew, I can have no memories of Mama not knowing exactly. Now she read the Bible every day. She remembered it. She was our concordance. And 2 Timothy 1 and verse 5, Eunice and Lois were complimented as mother and grandmother that they trained young Timothy from the, un, with the unfeigned faith that was in them came from the teaching of mother and grandmother. And then in 2 Timothy 3, verses 15 through 17, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise in the salvation. All scriptures give inspiration to God. So where did they learn those scriptures? From their mother's knee. Timothy did. She was the teacher. Maybe that's why both of her sons try to preach, Mike and I. Mama, I wanted to be a highway patrolman. That was, that was my goal. I want to be Broderick Crawford. Can you remember Broderick Crawford? Shows how old you are. Highway Patrolman. That's what I wanted to be. But Mama prayed I'd be a preacher. I didn't have a chance. I've never had a chance. How do you, you can't defeat your mama's prayers. So I tried to preach a little bit. What about my brother Mike? Somebody asked one time, did, mama, did your mama pray that you'd be a preacher? He said, no, she prayed I'd be a little girl. <laughs> so... Um, because of her love for the scriptures, I think she passed that on to us. Fifth of all, this is sort of a bad thing, and Sue won't like it that I tell this probably when she's here at the 11 o'clock service. I might not tell it. <laughs> you, you get to hear it. There was a time my dad worked with, with a co-worker that subscribed to romance magazines. And they did not have nudity in them, but they had some steamy stories of romance and my dad and I, I got to reading those for entertainment. Mama had a real serious talk with my dad one day. She came in and both of us were reading romance magazines would pale compared to what's on television today but she said this is not right and you're not setting a good example to Johnny she said to my dad by you reading these. They were removed from our home and I never ever saw a romance magazine again. That was Mama encouraging the right thing. Philippians 4 and verse 8 of Philippians 4. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, pure, lovely, good report, for any virtue, any praise, think on these. Mama taught us a lesson. There are good things to think about and things, you know, in their proper place and time to be fulfilled. I remember another conversation from the back seat listening with big ears as we rode in our 51 Plymouth to Matt Bruce Chapel. We were raised over here on Lono Drive, but we would drive all the way to Matt Bruce Chapel to worship and to be a part of the church there. So there were a lot of conversations riding along the way. I remember Mama talking to Daddy one time. She said, we ought to give more to the church. We're not giving like we should. And I don't know the outcome of that. I hope that he did something about it. I assume that he did. 
the giving to the Lord is very, very precious and very much a part of our Christian life. In 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, This I say, that he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man, according as he has proposed, purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. Mama was a cheerful giver. She wanted us to be better givers to the support the work of the church and the Lord's kingdom. I learned that from Mama. Even though Sue's better at it than I am through the years, she has been the one that said, you know, I think we need to be giving more. And we've tried to do that through the years. My mother was evangelistic. Neighbors would move in. She would go always and invite them to go to church with us. One family that sent the children, and when the children came home, their mother asked them how they liked church. And then the oldest, the little girl, said, I didn't, I, don't, I didn't like it. They passed out Kool-Aid and cookies, and they didn't give me any. <laughs> well, that was her view of the Lord's Supper, Kool-Aid and cookies, and she didn't get any. But Mama invited them. And I talked a couple of weeks ago about the big revival that we exchanged. I'll go to church with you if you'll go to church with me with one of our new neighbors. And it was an outdoor tent revival, Holy Ghost <laughs> revival, and the preachers running up and down the aisle, and, and the women running up and down the aisle, pulling people out of the their seats to come to the Lord. I'd, I'd never been a part of anything like that before or after. But Mama was evangelistic, and we all need to be more evangelistic. Last point. My mother died on the last day of December, the 31st, 2000. And my Uncle Paul and Charlie West, because she loved them as preachers, had them in their home often, they did the main part of the service. But we asked our daughter, my daughter, our daughter Lisa, who was very close to her grandma, to give a call or two. Or she wanted to. She volunteered to say that she'd like to do that. A tribute to her mother that I have recorded and will always treasure. She made everybody laugh by talking about how grandma would let them play out in the road. Of course, back then, Lone Gravel was just an old gravel road with very little traffic but she let them play on the road but she'd be standing there watching to make sure they were okay but December the 31st 2000 was the Lord's Day my mother had moved to the nursing home at Heritage in Nashville because my sister-in-law was head of nursing and we could get a financial help there and she would make sure mom was okay look after her personally she'd only been there about three weeks and had cancer her mind was fine and alert. Friday, we, Sue and I, were there with her for several hours. Saturday, Lisa went down and sang some songs with her and visited. Then Sunday morning, after I finished preaching at Sycamore, one of the brethren handed me a note that I need to call my brother. And I called him, and Mama had died. While they were in church, he and his family, and he was preaching, and while I was and our family were at Sycamore. He broke my heart that Mama died alone. She was too good a woman, had made too many sacrifices to die alone. And I thought my heart would burst out of my chest. There was a pain went through me that my Mama died alone. And I know we don't believe in voices, but we do believe in knowledge that comes from the Scriptures. And from the knowledge of the Scriptures, I heard loud and clear from the scripture knowledge, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the pathway of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And then Luke 16, when the angels came for Lazarus. I don't believe my mama died alone. Her sons were doing what she wanted us to do, to preach. The angels were there. The Lord said he'd be there. She didn't die alone. And it was as if a weight was lifted off of my chest and I could go on. Today, these are some lessons I've learned from my mother. Spiritual ones. And I'm sure you could share the same many lessons and attributes. If 
There's one precious soul here that needs to obey the gospel. Our mothers weren't perfect, but for many of us, we could say they were faithful Christians. They obeyed the gospel, faith, repentance, confession, baptism, and then they repented daily when they had gone astray. That's the God's pattern and plan. And if we can assist you today in becoming a New Testament Christian, just as you are, if you give your life to the Lord and be ever grateful and thankful for our mothers and for their example and influence, and pray and thank the good Lord and help us to be better Christians ourselves. And so we won't have to die alone. No. Would you come while we stand and while we sing? Just as